Welcome everyone to the Wolves Den and another action figure review. Today we are taking a look at a three pack of figures, the Toys R Us exclusive three pack of the G.I. Joe Special Forces. This pack includes uh, two remade figures uh, in the form of Outback here and Falcon. And over here we have a new but not so new figure in the form of Shooter. Um, packaging as as always for the last few years on these exclusive is really nice. We've got the nice black and blue color scheme. Got the cool little picture of Snake Eyes up here with some of the vehicles here. Got the G.I. Joe Real American Hero logo here. Uh, but you'll notice the star no longer says 50th anniversary. So they've stopped marketing this as 50th anniversary figures. Uh, let's take a look quickly at the back side because there's some really nice artwork back here of the three Joes in this three pack and then the three Cobras in the other three pack that I'll be looking at in a different video. All right, so now that we've seen what they look like in package, let's open them up and take a look at them. All right, first off, we're gonna take a look at Outback. Go through his articulation quickly here. His head does move side to side, all the way around actually. And as is typical with modern Joes, doesn't really move up and down very far. Uh, his arms rest at his side about that close, so not terribly close. Uh, his shoulders do move all the way up and down, and then rotate. His elbow has a single bend there, and it also rotates. Wrists rotate. And then the left one moves in and out. And then the right one moves up and down. Moves down pretty well, but doesn't move up very far. Got the torso twist there. And then the legs move to the side 90 degrees. And then forward 90 degrees. And then he's got double jointed knees, which is nice. And then rocker ankles, but they also pivot. So lots of motion in the feet. All right, taking a closer look at the figure itself, we see he does have a very nice, nice head sculpt here. A lot of nice details on the, the hair and the beard. Eyes are painted in well. See the black headband underneath. They did a good job painting the hair on his beard and his face there. He's got the Wolf Squad symbol there, which is why he's in all black. The Wolf Squad is a new squad they introduced a couple years back ago to G.I. Joe, where all the figures are in kind of darker grays and blacks and blue colors. All right, you may notice that he's wearing this same vest and belt as the Retaliation Roadblock from a few years back. And as such, he comes with all the same equipment that that roadblock came with. We've got the little handles here, which peg into the belt, like so. We've got knives that can fit into the vest, like that. A little arrowhead here, which can go in that slot there. There's this pole, which pegs into the back, like that. And then he's got the gun, which really, really doesn't go anywhere on him. So there's no place to, to store that. But what you do, these are kind of modular, so you take a handle here. And then you peg it into the weapon. Oop. There we go. So that's supposed to be a pistol. And you put the pistol in his hand. And he's good to go. Or you can take one of the handles and slot the knife in there. Gotta make sure you put it on the right way. 
And there, now he's got a little knife. Or you could take the pole off his back. And he's got a club. So, neat idea. But honestly, I, I don't like them. It just kind of looks awkward when you put them on the figure. You know, having the club or the little knife might might work out okay, but having all these pieces inside the vest and on the belt just, just looks funny. So I'm probably never going to use them. So I'm actually going to take the vest off. So I'm going to take his head off here to get the vest off easier. All right, and now we have an Outback. That looks like an Outback because he's got survival written on his chest. Which the original Outback had, and I think pretty much every Outback since then, has survival on his t-shirt here. All right, moving down the figure, we do have the belt that I mentioned earlier, which doesn't come off unless you were to re remove his legs, you know, with the screws there, and then you could work the belt off. So for now, that's just staying on there. Uh, nice details on the legs. You got the painted on straps where his holster is. Holster has a little pistol there. And that stays in there nice and snug. A lot of nice details on that holster. Wish some of it were painted, but as with most modern Joes, there's all kinds of nice details on figures, but they don't paint everything. Nice looking knee pads there. Nice look on the folds of the pant legs. Boots look good. You can even see the shoelaces and whatnot. So they, like, they always add a lot of detail to these figures, just don't paint everything so that it doesn't stand out very well sometimes. And then he's got this little knife sheath with a knife that slides right in there, but it doesn't slide in very far. Its blade still sticks out that far, so not a very good sheath. Outback does come with other other gear other than what I've shown you so far. He does have his figure stand, which has his full name on it, plus his code name, probably for licensing reasons. A lot of the new figures are that way. Uh, he does have this nice sniper rifle, which again, has a lot of nice detail on it. And the bipod even pops right off, and then you can just slot it right back in there. He comes with a machete. And last but not least, he comes with a backpack, the peg there. And the nice thing about the backpack is this thing does open up. It's got some little pegs. It just doesn't open up very easily sometimes. There. There we go. See the pegs are up here. Let's see if I can get the other one. Ah, there we go, finally. And then it opens up. And so you could hide some of his gear inside there. So as you saw, those pegs are pretty nice, so they do stay shut. So let's pop it on his back and see how he looks with it. Yep, looks pretty good. And the last little bit he comes with our file cards and he's got two of them each of are double-sided with different languages I'll let you take a look at his English one all right now for my final thoughts on Outback okay I have three issues with this figure First two issues are just cosmetic in nature. Uh, first one is his forearms here. I don't know if people noticed earlier, but they are quite large forearms. They just look a bit wrong. <laughs> uh, they're kind of Popeye forearms. Again, a cosmetic thing. 
I can actually look past that. Second is a cosmetic thing, and that's the head sculpt. It's just a bit too small for this body. Um, but not a big deal. Third thing which is a big deal is this hand, the right hand. The hand most people are going to try to put weapons in. His modular weapons will fit just fine in it. So you take the modular handle, nice tight grip. Not an issue. Take the weapons most people are going to want to display him with, like his gun here. Cannot hold him at all. Machete. Oh, falls right through his hand. His left hand holds everything nicely. So you could make him left-handed and that's not a problem. But if you want him right-handed, you're going to have to find some way to get him to grip those. Because they are not staying. You can see the grip is just a little too large there. It's not holding that stuff at all. So that is the biggest issue I have with the figure. Otherwise, I think he looks really good. I like the color choices. I like the darker colors. I've always liked darker colors on my military figures. I think it looks more realistic. Um, I think they made some good choices with some of the parts, other than the arms. You know, that's probably the worst choice. But the legs, the body... Everything else looks really good on him. So I think it is a good looking figure. He's got a lot of good posability. It's just that one hand that is the issue. All right. So let us move on to Falcon. And here we have Falcon. Let's take a look at his articulation. His head does move side to side. Arms rest at the against the body that close and then his shoulders do move up that far and then rotate all the way around. One bend at the elbow and those do rotate also. Wrists rotate, no further articulation there. He does have some ab crunch. Doesn't move very far forward or backwards but a little bit and from side to side. Uh, his legs do go out about that far to the side and that far forward. Uh, this does hinder it just a little bit, this, this piece here. does have double jointed knees. And his feet do rotate and move up and down. Alright, going over the figure a little bit here. Does have a removable beret, so that can come off. See his hair underneath, well painted. His eyes and eyebrows painted well on. Nice details on the face. He's got this red bandana, which is removable. You can just pop his head off and then take that off if you like. And then he looks fine without it too. So he doesn't have like a giraffe neck or anything. So the bandana isn't really hiding anything. It's Then he's got this web gear here. It's just a couple straps. Nothing special and that could easily slide off too if you wanted to take that off. Um, clipped here is the bottom part of his vest. You know, kind of looks like a skirt a little bit, but it is part of his jacket or his vest that he's wearing. Got some nice kind of bluish metallic looking knee pads, which is nice there. All the folds in his pants, nice details on his boots. Some little pockets and whatnot on his jacket. And there we've got the Wolf Squad emblem again on his shoulder pads and then the gold star on the other shoulder pads. So some nice little details all around on the figure. Falcon does come with a wide range of gear much like all the other Joe figures. Here we have his figure stand which has got his full name on it. He's got a shotgun here. He has a pistol, it's a tiny little pistol, he has no holster for it. 
but it is an extra weapon for him. And then he's got this gun here with the plastic strap there, so it's not very flex. Well, it's flexible, but too much wear, you know, work on it, it might wear out. And the one thing I don't like about this gun, it fits in his hand, no problem. It just looks large for what it is. It looks like it should be a smaller gun. And it does have the strap, so you can strap it over his shoulder. And you could carry it around like that. Uh, he's got his bandana, which goes around his neck. His beret, which I took off earlier. Does fit nicely on his head. Doesn't fall off too easily. So it stays on there nice. And he's also got this backpack, which has a lot of nice details on it. They actually painted some of them. They painted the rope there. It's got a knife that slides in and out which is nice backpack opens and there's a little communication device in there the antenna even comes off so you might want to be careful with that it just slides back in there and that clips shut should clip shut Well, it doesn't want to clip shut. Anyway, and then we can just slide it on his back. Like so. Determined to clip this shut. There we go, finally. Alright. And last, he comes with the, the file cards here in four different languages. I'll show you the English one here. Alright, now I will give you my final thoughts. Alright, the few problems I have with Falcon. Uh, first one I mentioned earlier was this gun. I just don't like the looks of this gun or how big it is. So there's that. Secondly would be the pistol. I wish, there's nothing wrong with the pistol, but I wish there was a holster for it on the figure. Uh, next would be his wrist articulation, which all they do is rotate, so that's that kind of limits some of the poses with weapons you can get them in. Uh, next would be you know the bottom of his jacket here. It doesn't quite fit close to his body here when it clips shut, so it it always looks open and it sticks out a little bit. So that's just a little bit. Uh, a little bit ugly looking, I guess. Uh, and lastly and most importantly, uh, I just find this figure kind of dull. He's He's got some a little bit of nice features. I mean, I, I said earlier that I liked the kind of blue metallic knee pads and even his shoulder pads look kind of neat, the metallic color kind of on there. And as weird as it is to say, I... Those are the features I like most on them, just just how those look. The rest of them is just kind of bland looking, just kind of boring. I'll, I'll admit I've never been a huge Falcon fan. I don't hate him, but I don't really like him either. And this figure doesn't do much to win me over. I don't know what would, but this figure, while a fine figure with you know decent articulation, looks all right, nothing terrible but he's just also very boring looking so he like I said doesn't really win me over uh, so let's move on to shooter and finally we have shooter so let's take a look at her articulation her head does move side to side all the way around uh, very, very slight up and down movement. Not enough to matter. Arms rest at the side about that close there and then move out that far. 
and then she does rotate at the shoulders. Uh, both arms have a very slight elbow bend. It's not very far at all. And then the wrists do rotate. Oh, the elbows do rotate also. A slight ab crunch, a little bit back and forward, but that's not very far. Legs do move out, all the way out to the side and all the way out forward. Does have the double jointed knees and the full rotation and, and up and down movement on the feet. Alright, taking a closer look at Shooter here, we've got a good look at her head sculpt. Did a really nice job on it. It's brand new. It's got a little ponytail in the back. You can see the nice strands of hair there. Did a good job painting in her eyes and eye, eyebrows. A lot of nice detail on the face. Really good job there. Uh, moving down, we see this piece of web gear she has. Just pretty basic. It's got a nice little knife sheath there on the shoulder. Uh, she's part of the wolf squad again as we see here which would explain partially her dark green uniform got the gold star there you know just a basic belt molded on there and when we get down to her legs we see some black and silver straps there uh, she's got a holster with a silencer sticking there uh, I'll, get, I'll show you the gun later she got a little pouch there. Very basic, very simple looking, but it, it does the job. Alright, Shooter comes with a few bits of equipment. Uh, first piece here, we have her figure stand. It's got her name on it. She's got that little knife that went in her sheath. Put that in her hand and she's got a good grip on it. No problems there. Put that back where it belongs. Fits nicely in its sheath there. She's going to fall down on me. I know it. Alright, there we go. Then we've got this little pistol here. With a silencer that just pops right off. Peg that right back on. Put that in her hand. There it goes. Nice, better fit. And she holds on to that fairly well. No real problems there. And then the silencer has this little holder right here. Keeps going in crooked. And then the pistol just goes in the back of the holster. And it's a little loose in there, so it might fall out. And it doesn't it doesn't stay in there very tight. And it just kind of, it kind of sticks out a lot. And then her last bit of gear. I'm just gonna rest her against there because I think she's gonna fall. Um is her gun case. There's a reason she's called Shooter. That's because she's got a big old sniper rifle. So inside here is her gun. Her main gun. Let's see if we can get this thing open. Nope. And if you can see all that, all the parts have their own little slots to fit in. Well, this one escaped. That goes right there. Everything's falling out. Well, let's just take it all out. We'll just dump it. Oh, wait. And there's that. So there's the empty gun case. Set that aside. So we've got the main part of the sniper rifle. Lots of nice detail. There's even some little blue paint on there. Might be hard to make out. But there's some blue stripes along there. We've got the barrel, which just 
slides in right there. Got the bipod, which clips in right there. We've got the the I don't I don't know the name of this, but the shoulder part rest shoulder rest. I don't know the exact name of that part of the gun. Uh, we've got the clip, which goes down there. And then we've got the sights, which is supposed to clip onto there, but it doesn't stay at all, ever, which is sad. Yeah, that, that sight does not stay on there. It doesn't clip in, it doesn't rest on there. If you want it to stay, you'd probably have to glue it, and that's kind of opposite the whole point of, you know, being in a... A sniper rifle that you assemble so saying right now that is something that is I don't like you know it's just I don't think anybody would like that so yeah that's just a poor choice of you know construction I guess so I will just set that aside because it's not gonna stay on there all right and last but not least she does have the file cards with the four different languages and I will let you look at the English one. And now let's get ready for my final thoughts. As usual, I will start with the negatives I see with the figure. And the first negative I have is with this sniper rifle. It looks really nice. It's a very cool looking sniper rifle. The fact that you could take it apart and put it in the gun case is really sweet. But it will never be fully assembled because of this scope. The scope will never clip in there, at least mine won't, without having to glue it. And if I glue it, then I'll never be able to disassemble everything and put it in the case because then things won't fit. And so that ruins the idea of the gun. So I could use her without the scope, and I guess that would be okay. It might look silly or incomplete or whatever, but, you know, that's a big disappointment. The gun also doesn't stay together very well. Besides the scope, the, sh the shoulder part pops off rather easily when I'm trying to put it in her hands, and so does the clip. You know, they're both very loose. And see, everything else has fallen off too. The, usually the barrel stays on and the bipod stay on fairly well, but not perfectly. The second negative I have with the figure is has to do with her holster and her sheath here. She's a very thin figure, which is fine, but then they add these very two bulky looking pieces of gear to her. I mean, this sheath does not need to be as thick as it is. It's hard to tell from the front, but from the side, hopefully you can see how just thick and bulky that is. And the holster is worse because it's more noticeable. It's just so large. They already have a holster that has a, a silencer holder and a pistol, you know, slot. I mean, it, there's one that they already have that they've used a thousand times before on other figures. Why didn't they reuse that for this figure? Why did they make this brand new mold, which I've, I've never seen this before on another figure, so I've got to assume it's a new mold. Why did they make this for this figure? Because it just sticks out so far, the gun doesn't even stay in the holster very well it just looks so bulky on this figure I think it would look bulky on even a a larger figure so it just it just detracts from an otherwise you know thin looking figure it's just to add this big like chunk on the side of her uh, the third negative I see is her arm articulation her leg articulation is fine it's you know, it's fantastic. But her arms are just hindered, A, by this web gear. The web gear is kind of thick, so it kind of hinders her inward movement of her arms. Uh, so if that was off, she'd be somewhat okay. But then her elbows have a very, very poor bend here. They don't bend very far at all. And her wrists have no, nothing but a, nothing but a rotation. There's no inward or outward movement, no up and down movement. So it's just the rotating wrists. So that doesn't help her in trying to position her to, ca to carry especially this sniper rifle. You could probably give her a different gun 
and she'd probably hold it okay but she's a little bit limited in her arm movements so her so she's thin enough where you can get her in a you know decent enough gun holding pose but she could be so much better with better articulation in the arms especially and maybe better wrists and the funny thing is they've made female figures recently that have better arm articulation so why they again why they make these new arms I assume they're new arms they might be reused from an older figure that I don't know about but why couldn't they have used the arms from like the retaliation lady J those had much better articulation so despite this figures many flaws it does have some good going for it the head sculpt is a really nice brand new head sculpt that they made for this figure they did a really good job on that the lower body articulation is excellent uh, really no complaints about the articulation down there and just the overall look of the figure it was designed to look like a 1982 original G.I. Joe she's supposed to be this you know legendary 14th original Joe that you know disappeared or whatever and so finally they made a figure of her and you know she looks like she was an original 1982 G.I. Joe just with the simple you know dark greens black belt and web gear and straps and whatnot she looks like you know she would have been designed in 1982 so they did a good job in representing that aspect of the character so ultimately it is a flawed figure uh, it could have been better there's a lot of nice possibilities here a lot of nice ideas here that just weren't executed as well as they should have been um, but still it's it's not a terrible figure it's not a great figure I still like it well enough but it's by far not a perfect figure so I can understand if other people hate it uh, but you know I don't love it but I like it well enough that you know I'll add her to my collection with that I'd like to Thank everyone for watching yet another action figure review. I should be back soon with some more G.I. Joe figure reviews. Until then, thanks for watching.